So we now have to add a function or actually want to add a class in our network and our package that first of all loads those images from a mini batch. And we wanted to draw those images randomly from our database. And then it has to resize all those images uh, that they all have the same size because at the end, uh, we want to feed in our information to our dense layer. And once we have decided for a particular number of neurons and for a particular uh, in, input size of the layer, and all those images uh, which are passed on have to have the same size. So it cannot change all the time because this part of our a and or conversion neural network is fixed. So we have to do these uh, things first. And I want to uh, first of all show you the code um, that you get a kind of an overview. So we need um, two more libraries. So first of all, we need a library that's called globe where we can search for the images like in my case on the hard disk in a particular folder and it creates a list of those images in the folder. So it works a bit like LS in Linux. And then we wanna draw these images randomly and that's why we need a random number generator and it's called random.sample which draws those images without repetition. And we also wanna rescale those images which we cannot do with a matplotlib we will used in a, um, a different method and it's called image. So therefore we want to set up our class read scale images. And in this class, we will have a method uh, where we have the mini batch size and the A and N size as input. And again, a mini batch, mini batch size is the number of, of images which you want to process uh, through the network at once for a certain number of iterations. Um, and then we just draw uh, another set of images and so on and so on because we can't just put all those images in our network at once. It would be too much data. And then also, of course, we want to resize them so we need an A and N size. So we have our um, folders or our paths and then we create our lists and then from the lists, we want to determine how many uh, dogs and cats do we have and we want to assign the classes. So we want to create a sparse vector. So the dogs um, are assigned to zero and the cats are assigned to one. So we can easily do this with NP zeros. Um, then we want to stick them together so they have all classes, all images together. Um, and then we are ready for sampling those um, images in a certain range. And the range is the total number of the images. And then we just draw a certain number of images from the a large sample and the number of images we draw is determined by the mini batch size. So that will give us just a number and we can use this number as indexing. Um, and then uh, we can um, actually already run our loop for extracting and rescaling those images. We wanna however, reallocate a matrix first where we wanna save all those images and the size of the matrix is clear. It's uh, X A and N times Y A and N, which by the way is the same number. Um, but just you know, it's the first the X and the Y coordinate. Then we have three um, uh, color channels and then the number of images. And we open those images, resize those images. Um, then we also want to make sure that's an array because the image format. Uh, or the format we get from image.open has a different format. It's an image format. And then we in principle would be ready to put our resized image in our matrix, which contains all those images. Um, we also wanna make sure that it's, um, um, that's 8-bit. Uh, has to do hardly with batch normalization, but I will say a few more words about it later. Um, however, it might be that some of those images are not 3D. Uh, it might be that we have uh, black and white images and they are 2D. So what we do then is we uh, check for the size, for the shape of the images. And if it's not three, so it must be two. Uh, and then we um, create a 3D matrix. And for every color channel, uh, we put our black and white image. Uh, it looks a bit like adding more information than there is, but it's actually not the case because 
uh, then all color channels just contain the exact same information and when we run over convolution filter over it, um, we will just have the same result for all the color channels. And then of course we sum it up anyway, so it will not um, add information which is not there. And we wanna return the matrix of all the images and also the classes. So that's our code. And therefore let's go back and um, create this code. Um, so we have to import these two libraries here. And then we have our path. And I just wanna show you what it looks like. So we have then our path, let's say cats. And then we have a list of all those images. And then for example, we can just open one. And if we just look at the format, uh, it's not an array, it's an image format. So that's why you can just display the image as it is, and then here's the image. And then we want to resize the image, let's say 50 times 50 pixel, uh, and here's the image. Okay, so I want to say something about the uh, normalization problem. Um, so one thing we did, or what you have seen already in the code is that we make sure it's all 8-bit. And just remember what was 8-bit. So when we just look at the maximum value of our image, it's 255 and this minimum value is zero. So we have 256 values. Um, why is it 256? It's 8-bit, so it's two to the power of eight. Um, and we have integer values that go from zero to 255. In principle, our values can also go from zero to one. And then the increment is one over 255. Uh, 256, which is this, which then has, or this image con stores the same amount of information. It's just another dynamic range. And that's the problem then, because if you have images um, with a mixed dynamic range, let's say some go from zero to one and some go from one or from zero to 255, or maybe even have 16 and 32 bits. Um, then you have always different numbers and when our network learns and when we want to optimize it um, and all the gradient descent and everything that you do in the network, of course, is, is purely numerical. So you just do stuff with numbers, let's say it like this. And then if you have images with larger values and images with smaller values, um, they're not treated in the same way um, because it doesn't know what these numbers mean. <laughs> and that's the reason why you have to be careful with that. Um, so you have to normalize um, these images to a, a particular standard and that's called batch normalization. So we actually also would need to include this part. Here we are safe uh, because we have just one database where it's all eight bits. Um, but if you combine images from different databases, please always add the part where you perform batch normalization. So keeping this in mind, um, we could actually go to our um, module now and just add the class um, read scale ints and that we want to add a method which is called read scale. And of course, we need the mini batch size. And the A and N size. All right. So we add our paths. And you will see the error message here. So we also have to add our libraries as well. So we need to, for this, for rescaling images, Add 
and we have NumPy, but we also have to import random. And we have to do that for picking images randomly. Okay, so Then we determine the length of those lists. And we also set up the sparse vector for the different classes. So for cats, just uh, for dogs, it's just zero and for cats it's just one and okay so then um we add our class system or we create a vector of all the classes so we just say, ah, sorry, that was a few steps ahead. So we uh, have cats and dogs, and then we first of all create uh, a vector with all classes. And that's just MP array. And then we want to stack them horizontally. So dogs and cats, and we want to do the same thing with all images. Um, so these are, we can also just stack them the same way, H stack, dogs, cats. So these are the so these are the, um, it's a list with all the uh, addresses of all the files. Then we determine the length. And let's take a look at those values, by the way. By the way. So we have 12,500 um, each. So that's what it actually takes. So you need um, lots of images just for these two classes. And there's also something important to note. Um, the number of classes or the number of images for a certain class, um, they have to be equal more or less. Um, and that it's also important if you have more than two classes, of course. And what is the reason? So let's say we have 12,500 cats, but only 100 dogs. Then the network best performs actually if it always says cats and completely ignores the dog, uh, the dogs, because if you have 100 dogs and have 12,500 cats, um, that's less than 1%, um, then it always says cats, and the accuracy is always 100%. So if you run this network, and it always says cats, cats, then you have an accuracy of 100%, and you think, oh yeah, that's that's cool, uh, I can use my network. Um, that is not the case, because there were not enough uh, dogs in this case. And that's a bias you should avoid um, so that you have ideally a uh, uniform distribution over the numbers of all these different classes um, in order to avoid these biases. Um, so that's something really have to take into account. Uh, in our case, that's fine. Um, we have as many cats as dogs. So let me just go through these different categories here. We have cats and we have dogs. 
dogs and cats, dogs and cats. We never mix it up. And then we just put dogs on top of cats in here as well. Okay, so now we um, are ready for drawing those images randomly um, by random sample in a range from LD plus LC. So that's then 25,000 images. And we want to draw a certain number, which is just a mini batch size. And that's just a number which gives us the index from where we have to extract our classes from all classes and then IDX. And then we automatically have the corresponding images. Okay, and we also want to determine the size of our network, so we get it from um, A and N size zero and one. And again, it's actually <laughs> so it's the same number usually, uh, but let's do it like this. Okay, so then. We are ready for running our loop. And first we wanna uh, set up a matrix. We wanna save those rescaled images. So the size is X A and N times Y A and N times three, because we have three color channels, times mini batch. And then we run our loop. Over the mini batches. So first um, we say I and equals, then we just load the method image, our image. Which is in the list int, so that's where we have our half now. And we just grab number, number i. Then we have to resize it. to size a and n, so x a and n times y a and n. And then we also want to make sure that we have an array. And because what you saw in our image, um, that's our image, and the type of our image is not an array. And you can also have binary images. Uh, so it fully makes sense to, to add this even though you probably might not need that uh, many times, but um, just to make sure we all have the same format. So in principle, you could now say that we take our matrix here, um, all rows, all columns, and all channels, I equals our but now the problem is, so let me just put this nicely in shape here, um, that we can have a black and white image, which actually is um, is true. So in some of those, some of those pictures are really black and white. So they are 2D matrices instead of 3D. So if we can just say if length we are shape. is not three. Right. 
right? Um, then we just set up an empty matrix, which has the size x, a, and n times y, a, and n times 3. Um, and then we just take this matrix, take all rows, all column, and start with level 1, where you just put in our array. And we want to do this for all the diff three different color channels. So one, two, and three. And that actually should work. And then we also just want to make sure that we Eight bit. So we just say S type and P eight bit and eight bit and integer. So we are ready to return it. Let me just check whether it's all in line. We don't need this here anymore. Um, that should work, but let's see. And then we want to have the this matrix here as an input, as an output, and also the classes. So I don't see any typo now. Um, let me just compile it. And we don't need this part here anymore. And now we can say from my a and n import everything. And we have our read image scale. So we just call this particular instance. Let's call it read and scale is our instance here and then we want to say read and scale and use the auto complete uh, let's do that in the console um, because sometimes the audio complete doesn't work in the editor um, so here it works so we have a mini batch let's say 50 images and a and n size let's say um, yeah 100 times 100 um, it actually also works if the image is smaller than that, um, then it's just uh, resized as well. It's, then it just is, it appears to be, it's just larger than, uh, but of course doesn't have more information. So it returns our matrix with all these images and all those classes. So let me just run this and see whether we get an error message. Um, we get an error message. Um, then let me just fix that here quickly. So one <laughs> important thing we missed was uh, overriding our matrix was the whole point. Um, so let's see whether it works. Uh, let's do the same thing again. Let's see what kind of error message we're getting now. We don't get an error message. That's good. Uh, and now let's create some plots. So just to make sure that we have the correct images. Um, so we, yeah, I can do this with image show. And let's say we have our matrix and all rows or column or columns. And let's pick one particular. Um, color channel 2, for example, and one particular image 10. And let's see whether we have, <laughs> it's interesting. Um, so that's lots of people and there's a dog. So let's try to look at the class number 10. And hopefully it says dog. Actually, it's live. So it's the first time that I really see that. <laughs> um, so 
what was one uh was cat um that's interesting uh, let me try another one maybe mix up the classes so let me just check uh so we have dogs and cats ld and we have dogs and we have cats um but to me it actually looks like a dog um that's interesting okay <laughs> let's try another one um, that's definitely a dog. And it says dog. So zero was dogs. Okay, let's try another image. Uh, because now I'm a bit <laughs> confused. Um, oh yeah, of course, how many do we have? What was the mini batch size? The mini batch size was 15, 50, I think. Yeah. So we have uh, 20, for example. That's dog again. And that's a dog again. Okay, so we also have cats somewhere. Um, the first image is a cat, so let me just try that. Uh, the first image has zero, so that should be a cat. Uh, because cats have the class one. And we have a cat. And where else do we have a cat? Two, three, four. So it must be three then, right? Because it's two to one. So zero, one, two, three. That should be a cat as well. And the next one should be a cat as well. Um, so I think it works, um, <laughs> except in this case. So that's really interesting image. Um, maybe that's still a cat, who knows? Um, <laughs> okay, so now we have our images here. Um, it works. I think it all makes sense. And we have now our images. And we still have to add the convolution part. And that's what we want to do um, in the next step, because we have our function by convolution. And then we have our function convolution self-made. And now we have our images where we can apply the convolution. So what we could do in the next step is just add um, a class convolution where we uh, perform the convolution of all those images here um, with all those layers. And that's what we're going to do in the next step.